Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We pray that you are in good health. We ask all present to please respect the instructions given by our parish ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers as requested, maintaining a social distance of two meters, and wearing face masks when entering, leaving, or moving from one place to another within the church. We will not have a collection at the offertory, but you can use the boxes provided at the entrance or exit of the church to donate online. Thank you for your continuing support of the parish. The time of Holy Communion further instructions will be given, and at the end of Mass, we ask that you please follow the usher's instructions for exiting from the church. Our presider today is Archbishop Peter Hunt. Our recessional, processional hymn is number 583 in the CBW. Please stand for the processional hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. This morning I'll be celebrating the Mass in time of pandemic, and I invite you to join with me in praying in a special way today for our leaders as they uh, seek to lead us through this time, uh, particularly as they eh, determine how best to uh, open the schools next week. And pray also for our health care professionals uh, as they uh, put themselves in harm's way to, to assist those who are ill at this difficult time and for parents and, and students as they prepare for the coming school year. As we pray for all of the intentions that we bring to this Mass, we call to mind that we have a God of great love and, and great mercy. And we call to mind our sins and ask forgiveness for these failings on our part. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, 
grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to health care workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love so that together we may give glory to your holy name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
According to Luke. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the book of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? Jesus said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. And there were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard all this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove Jesus out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. You've probably heard the definition of an expert as being somebody who's more than 50 miles away from home. And I think it's true of prophets as well. And Jesus speaks to this in today's gospel. And it's understandable in a way. Uh, If somebody comes to us who's a stranger, uh, we can be objective about what they tell us. We don't know the person, so we we focus on what they're saying and we digest it, and we leave the personality out of it. But when it's somebody that we know, uh, what we hear them say is colored by what we know about them. And particularly if they're saying something that we don't particularly like to hear, well, immediately comes to mind anything that we have against that person or anything that gives them less credibility. This is what Jesus is dealing with in today's Gospel. No prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. Conversely, Paul, in our first reading, dealing with the Corinthians, or yes, uh, he is a stranger. He is further than 50 miles from home, and he is very eloquent. And they've been impressed by him in the past when he was among them. But Paul does not want them to focus on his eloquence or on the fact that he's a, from somewhere else. He wants them to focus particularly on the message that he's giving and not to see it with uh, rose-colored glasses, but to see it as it truly is. He is preaching a Christ crucified, resurrected, but crucified first. And he's trying to make the point to them that 
taking on this religion, taking on this faith, believing in Christ, calls them to be willing to emulate the person who, to, in whom they have faith. That they themselves must be open not only to the glories that Christ would give them, but also to the challenges that are part and parcel of being his follower. In the Gospel, Jesus quotes a passage from Isaiah, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, that he has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the poor. All of us have been anointed in our baptism and in our confirmation. All of us are called in our own ways to be prophets of the Lord. And so the message that we hear coming from today's reading certainly applies to you and I as well. Uh, that we, in our own home, uh, among our own relatives and friends, are called to be prophets. Prophets like Paul, not using eloquence, but seeking to uh, emulate Christ himself and lead others to emulate Christ by our example. We are called to bring good news to the poor, and we do that more by our actions than by our words, by our helping hand, uh, by our kind smile, by our patience and our willingness to reach out to others. And in doing that, we are prophets, prophets of the Lord, and prophets that are bringing good news and healing and love. The message of the, I think there's another message also in today's readings for us, that just as we are called to be prophets, the people around us are as well. And so it's important for us to seek to be open to the message that God wishes to give us through others, specifically through their example, but maybe even through their words, and sometimes words we'd rather not hear. As we continue in our Mass today, we thank the Lord for calling us, and we ask him to help us to be faithful to our call and to have our eyes and our ears open to hear him speaking in others as well. God bless you. Jesus has assured us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst. Confident of God's presence here among us, we offer to him our prayers of petition. We begin by praying for our Pope and for all our religious and civil leaders. We pray that they may be open to God's guidance and may truly be prophets of his goodness and justice through the way they seek to lead. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are struggling at this time uh, with persecution or hurt or pain of any kind for those that are struggling with illness or anxiety, for God's consolation and healing for them, for this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have been anointed, for all of us who have been given the gift of faith, that we may recognize the greatness of the gift and the mandate that we have been given, and that, may we, that we may seek humbly day by day to live out that call to be prophets of the Lord, for this we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven. For this we pray to the Lord. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us by your power a source of healing and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not, you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life, and being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love, and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Oh. Uh. 
celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and look forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and this one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. And freed at last from the wound of corruption, and found fully and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptism we are God's children and so with confidence we can pray to our heavenly father as Jesus our brother taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe, prudent, and respectful manner, we ask that you please respect and adhere to the following instructions. Instead of the individual attestation, Amen, by communicants at the time of receiving Holy Communion, there will be one general attestation for everyone before the distribution begins. Those wishing to receive communion are asked to ensure that their face mask is properly in place before coming forward, remain in their pew until invited forward by the ushers, maintain social distance of two meters in the communion line, sanitize their hands before receiving Holy Communion. As communicants approach the front of the communion line, we ask that you sanitize your hands, bow towards the host, in silence receive the host in your hands, move to the side to consume the host, return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Any person who cannot receive Holy Communion in the hand is welcome to come forward to receive a blessing. The Body of Christ.
Let us pray. O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. I invite you to join me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O oh Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. O oh God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our mission in Him can be found in the CBW number 517. Lord Jesus, we must know you. 517. <laughs>
Lord Jesus. 